Hurricane Maria has completely destroyed uh, power and electricity in Puerto Rico. And uh, at the moment, uh, we don't have a number of fatalities. However, authorities are expecting some deaths as a result of this uh, huge hurricane that has gone from category five to category four, back to category five again. And so it's been incredibly destructive. And if you take a look at these photos, you'll get a sense of uh, just how severe the storm was. Um, now, an official uh, for the governor of Puerto Rico has released a statement saying that in terms of the infrastructure, uh, Puerto Rico will not be the same. Uh, this is something of historic proportions. And he also says that it's a total devastation and they have lost 100% of their power, meaning that it's you know difficult to communicate with officials there um, and kind of get a, an estimate in terms of the damage and whether or not lives were lost. Uh, but it's it's terrible by itself. This natural disaster is bad by itself. But you also have to take uh, the entire context in mind. You know what Puerto Rico is dealing with in terms of their economic situation, and and this just adds you know insult to injury. And my heart goes out to them. Yeah, it's it's devastating. It in terms of how quickly some historical facts about this hurricane in particular. It is the tenth most intense hurricane that has come and hit. Um, out of the Atlantic area ever. Um, it is the most intense hurricane to hit. And in terms of intensity, that's a measure of barometric pressure, not necessarily wind speed. When it hit, you'll hear it was a category four when it made landfall, but it was only two miles an hour shy of a category five. Mm -hmm. So it had 155 mile an hour winds. Um, and it is the most intense uh, hurricane to hit Puerto Rico since before the Great Depression. Uh, and the devastation is really untold and there's people that are that were told by one of the heads of um, you know, the infrastructure committees to, to evacuate or die. Yeah. Those are the words that they use. And it was absolutely terrifying for these people who, you know, kind of when you encounter a hurricane, there's two sides of it, and the, the there's the leading edge and the tailing edge. Oh this the leading edge hit Puerto Rico head on. Because yeah, they can't they can't send in rescue workers when they have winds of this of this um, speed. Yeah. Basically, and that's the reason why they're like either bunker down or get out if you can. The other problem with getting out is that even um, tourists that were in the area, right. or even people that were escaping, you know, the other islands in that area from the previous hurricane, were basically trapped in Puerto Rico and they could not leave the island. Yeah. Right, there were tourists that were um, stuck in hostels, yeah. and you know, CNN spoke to a couple of them, and they said, you know, luckily the the people running the hostel are taking good care of us, and we feel safe. Um, and there were others who said, you know, the building that we're in feels stable, but what we're really concerned about is the flooding. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. said if you're in a flood plane, you will in a flood flood prone area, you will die. They said if you're in a wooden house, you will die. It's wow. terrifying, and I may, that may be hyperbole to motivate people to actually move Leave. to a, a safer right. area. But you were talking about the last hurricane. Did you guys hear about Delta Flight 431? No, tell Delta me. Delta Flight it. 431 was the last flight to fly into Puerto Rico to load up passengers to get folks out of Puerto Rico. And there was this aviation blogger who was just kind of paying attention and looked at the aviation map of where all the planes were and everyone was headed away. And he noticed like one is totally just going to Puerto Rico after everyone in their right mind has turned away. And people started following it and it got started to trend a little bit as everyone was like, Ugh, I see it, there's kind of a band that they might be able to make their way through. Oh, and so they right. go in and they land, I'm getting chills right now I talking about this, it. Yes. They land between the two bands and they get in and from the flight attendants on board, it takes a while to get, and this was like a full on 737 or equivalent. Yeah. This is a three by three passenger, you know, mid-sized jet. And they got everybody off and on in a time that no one would ever think possible. They shifted the departure to early. Yes. Which like most people would be like, are you kidding me? They's like, we are leaving early or we're not leaving. Yes. And they landed, you can track the whole thing online. They got up and you can watch it try to take off into the wind because you have to go into the wind. And you're looking at it like that's not fast enough for a plane to take off. But there's so much headwind that it creates the correct pressure. For that plane to Look take Look at you off. getting Jesus all scientific. Christ. I got, I got goosebumps. It's right. nuts. I mean, that's the kind of that's stuff crazy. that you see. And this was, a, you know, some some aviation professionals that took their life into their own hands, and then also placed their lives and the lives of others in the hands of other aviation professionals right. to execute that. And if you look at it, it was 
a ridiculous turnaround. Um, but in terms of where this one's this is going for people who are wondering what's happening next, uh, it's moving on by Thursday. It should be in Turks and Caicos, southeastern Bahamas. If you're wondering, it's too early as yet to determine whether it will actually make landfall in the United States. It looks like most models are saying that it stays out. It, it gains a little more steam once it moves on from where it is right now, and then it starts dissipating as it moves up along the Atlantic right. coast. Watch the Young Turks commercial free, download it or stream it, watch it any way you like at tytnetwork.com slash join.